I'm Lindsay Steen. I, I'm one of the owners of Wild East Brewing Company based in Brooklyn, New York. We opened up in March of 2020. Was not planned that way. We're planning our grand opening for a 420 grand opening, April of 2020, but then uh, COVID happened and uh, they sh everything was shutting down. We had uh, like 14 draft lines ready to go. We have 20 total. We had been doing some small scale distribution and as soon as they declared the official shutdown, uh, we opened our doors for beer to go. Thank goodness we had a crawler machine and two pallets of crawlers. Thank you KCBC for selling those to us. Uh, we were able to do that legally and that was, that was how we opened. What was your background? Why did there's three of you? Or there's three of us. Yep, three of us owners. Uh, I'd have to say, Brett and Tyler are like, they're the very more competitive, passionate home brewers. Uh, I home brewed more because I thought it was pretty cool to have my own beer on tap at my house. Uh, I'm not a competitive person, I would say, but I, I am a science geek and um, also <clears throat> I have my master's in business. I always wanted to own my own company. And um, being from Colorado at Craft Beer, they're one of the more original states where a lot of craft breweries launched, uh, just was something I really liked. I liked the vibe of the industry. Um, it's very community oriented. And I wanted to run my own business. Um, yeah, craft beer is cool but I did, I really wanted to run my own business. And uh, Brett and Tyler there we go. were, um, they had started their own business plan. And I actually was starting my own business plan with, uh, with another friend who had, <clears throat> as we were kind of working on ideas and writing up a plan, she had some family emergencies and had to move back to Colorado. And at which case I didn't want to do it by myself. And so, you know, I met them through the craft brewing community in New York City, which is a very, very tight collaborative community. And uh, they knew each other well, I knew them less, but I, I wanted good business partners that I felt we shared the same values, but also had complementary skill sets. And between the three of us have very diverse skill sets that just puzzle piece together, which is great. It made for a good trio. And I think once we all came together, the ball just started rolling, like things started happening. I brought in the business financial background, the sales background, um, some of the science and geek laboratory stuff. Brett and Tyler had the beer background, but Brett, who is our brewer, our head brewer, has the schooling, the training, and just beyond the technical part is truly an artist with, with the beer he makes. It's amazing beer that's well attended for. He cares about every little thing. Um, and Tyler's, I mean, Tyler's homebrew is incredible. It, you know, Tyler has like an advertising marketing background. Um, he's a very structured, detail-oriented person. So it just, we all just fit and that's when, like I said, things just really started to happen. It took us a year and a half to find a space in Brooklyn. It's a shit show, I'll tell you that. To, to negotiate a lease and what landlords were looking for was like, in some cases, completely mind-blowing. I, I couldn't believe the things that, that were happening, but we finally found a great space and our landlord is awesome. He's he's shown so much patience for us as a business through COVID because there's been a lot of periods of time where we couldn't make our rent. And he's really worked with us, he believes in us and I think that's been truly, God I hate this word, but a blessing um, because some people were completely fucked. Their landlords didn't care. We set out to do a variety of styles, every style stylistically, say done traditionally, brewed to how it needs to be brewed and brewed well. Um, as we kind of say, we're like back to slow beer. No, you're fine. Um, from you know the 
conception of our business in our minds. We knew we all of our loggers would be decocted. And with the trend of beer in the United States in general, you see these hay, the haze craze, all this stuff, not a brewery's open with the model of brewing ales, single infusion breweries. Um, the systems can't, you know, they're not set up to do decoctions. That was something that we set out to do from the get-go because many of our recipes require them as also the tradition of brewing certain styles has that. We have a niche for wild beer. That's kind of like our sexy side. Uh, can you build a business model off of that right out of the gates? Very difficult to do, but that was something we knew we wanted to stick to, like lambic-inspired ales, saisons, barrel-aged, um, and we're not talking like the bourbon barrel-aged imperial stouts. It's like, you know, aging our saisons in wine barrels, the lambics, things like that. Um, and then our lagers. Like we set out, we were going to make a good lager, the cocktail lager, the way it was supposed to be made, as well as other ales. We have English ales, we have IPA, we have that stuff. Our lagers, our lager program took off kind of unexpectedly. Uh, and we've kind of found our niche there along with this raising trend of craft lager in the United States. Yeah, so we it's a big trend. And it zero, is. zero beers and uh, lager is a big trend in yep. the last few years. Yeah, and that's the challenge. That's I feel you're now seeing brewers being challenged on their diversity and their skill set and their ability to brew a good lager. We've been tested to be able to be diverse in doing all of these styles well. And that's, people really appreciate our tap list because we have a farmhouse section, we have our lager section, we have our hop forward section. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> um, and we do, we do sours. Uh, we don't kettle sour. That's another thing of a traditionally brewed Berliner Weiss, you know, the no boil mash. Souring is done in fermentation uh, with our mixed culture. What's your production volume right now? Like half around, so this year will be a little over uh, 2,000 barrels. So like I probably around 2,400 hectoliters uh, production and sales volume. And how far do you think you want to grow? Do you want to <laughs> grow big? I know you as a marketing, you know, there's often sometimes a tension between the brewers. Um, I mean, we think about what truly is our maximum capacity yeah. based on the system that we have. We've added tanks. Yeah. When we saw the logger taking off, we need loggering tanks. We need yeah. conditioning tanks. Uh, thank God to some of our investors helped us out get some of those tanks. Our neighbors, Three's Brewing, amazing brewery. We're moving out of one of those spaces and they gave us a fucking still, steal on um, a loggering fooder and a bright and another conical. that really helped us out um, because adding a tank isn't isn't cheap I, at some point I was freaking out because we needed to expand but I didn't have the money for it uh, and along comes threes our wonderful friends yeah. we um, self-distributed for a long time you know since the inception since we could sell beer getting out doing some hyper local stuff and then so our license allows us to distribute our own beer within the state of New York as well as in Washington DC federal land, not state. Otherwise, when you go out of state, you have to work with a distributor. Um, recently, like this is a change as of two weeks ago, we went ahead and gave all of our self-distributed um, business to our distributor in New York, who they've, there's a lot of bad reputations with distributors. Uh, they are, they've done really well for us. And we wouldn't have done that if we didn't have the faith that they would continue to grow our business. It just, it got to a point where we were kind of maxed out. I either needed to buy a new vehicle, hire more people, invest. And when you balanced out those costs, let the distributor do it. That's their business. We still have our salespeople on the ground supporting our brand. I'm a strong believer in that, that you don't just sign off to a distributor across your fingers and hope they sell your beer. It's collaborative partnership and um, they'll continue to grow our brand while we focus on what we need to focus on is making good liquid. So. Well, thank you so much for talking to the very Thank you. Really <laughs> All right. Wonderful to get you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.